This video is all about Vancouver's most walkable neighborhoods, but I'm not just gonna sit here and talk at you about these neighborhoods. I'm gonna get out there and show it to you. Here we go, getting ready to explore most walkable neighborhoods in Vancouver. First of all, we're gonna show you what it looks like on the map so you don't get lost when you go out there yourself. And then I'm gonna drive over to each of these neighborhoods and we're gonna check them out. We're gonna explore them on foot. And I'm gonna show you exactly what they look like and what makes them special. So stick around, watch the whole video. At the very end, I save the best for last. We're gonna start with one of my favorites and we're gonna end with Vancouver's most walkable neighborhood at the very end. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. Let's uh, move on over to the computer so I can walk you through what the neighborhood looks like. And I'm gonna take you out into the field as well. So let's start right now. All right, we're gonna start our tour of Vancouver's most walkable neighborhoods with Kitsilano. Why Kitsilano? Uh, more commonly, we call it affectionately Kits. And I'm right here at Kits Beach. I'm gonna take you outside and show you around there a little bit, but Kits is one of my favorite parts of Vancouver. It is uh, gorgeous. It is connected to the water and the mountains. There's views in every part of, of Kitsilano pretty much. And such a central area. You're right in the middle of this, well, not in the middle of the city, but so connected to downtown. Um, and it's also um, gonna have a brand new SkyTrain station within uh, the next couple of years. I just drove past the big construction pit. Um, and so it's gonna be the new terminus of a new SkyTrain line connecting Kitsilano to the rest of the city and to downtown even more and making it even more walkable. So let's go yes. check uh, it out. Vancouver is really quintessential neighborhood. When people think of Vancouver, aside from downtown, they often think of Kitsilano and it's where a lot of newcomers to the city settle because it offers so much and it's such a beautiful spot. And it's actually really not all that expensive, crazy. It was where I bought my first condo when I was a young man. I still have a soft place in my heart for it. It offers Beach access right there, that's Kitts Beach. Uh, also easy access over here. It's not technically in Kitsilano, but to Jericho Beach and Spanish Banks a little further. And you also have these gorgeous views to the North Shore Mountains that will overlook Kitsilano and downtown. You get views over to the downtown core and to the West End and Stanley Park over there as well. But it offers so much and is so convenient and not terribly expensive. So let's take a quick peek in here at uh, what it looks like. There we go. So we're kind of at Kitts Point a little bit. You can see the West End over there. That's Stanley Park, North Shore Mountains. So we're looking north. That would be west. Beautiful sunset views. And now this is looking back uh, towards Kitts Beach. Uh, and this is August 2011. That's quite a while ago. But I'm surprised it's not busier in August of 2011. Uh, must have been a cool summer's day, I guess. But this beach is jam-packed in the summer months, I have to tell you. And where people want to live in Kits is generally north of Forth. And north of Forth, you're going to find a lot of condominium developments, smaller, older condominium developments. Let's just pop in here. There's an, a taller building. There are a, a little smattering of these taller condo buildings. that They actually banned them because they were impacting the view. Um, so most of the buildings are these lower three and four story buildings that you see all around us here. Yeah, mostly they're going to be built in the 70s and 80s. And looks like that one's a little bit newer. This one might be built in the 90s. But that's typically the housing stock in Kitsilano. And because it's older, that's also why it tends to be a little bit cheaper. And then 4th Avenue is one of the main business districts. Uh, so we can see 4th Avenue right here. There's a Whole Foods on that corner, Safeway over here, a little McDonald's back there, Shoppers Drug Mart. So you got really everything you're going to want. Uh, this is where Lululemon started uh, just down the block here, their original store. Oh, there's a Greek restaurant and not fourth, but actually when we go up to Broadway, that that is the original Greek town in Vancouver and uh, a lot of Greek uh, heritage in this neighborhood. Um, so south of fourth, you're going to find more condominiums, uh, large sort of, uh, houses that have been converted into multiple dwellings. And a lot of that is housing stock for UBC students. And, uh, then also townhouse developments. Once you get past 12th, so just south of 12th, you're going to find that it's primarily single family residential. So you can see here and, um, not inexpensive there. It's a fairly pricey neighborhood. Um, that was quite a transition uh, from, because that was January. And what was it back here? Uh, 
that was August again. Yeah. So you can see the difference, right? Like beautiful tree lined streets, a lovely neighborhood, a lot of character houses. That's, that's pretty typical of, uh, Kitsilano, these older character homes. And yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's got a walk score of 92. You do not need a car. You're so conveniently located no matter where you want to go in the city. And, uh, out here is UBC Pacific spirit national, uh, regional park, lots of trails to run in, to, to bike in, um, just to go for walks with the dog, uh, along the beach as well. And then access to downtown Vancouver. And they are just building along Broadway, the new, uh, Broadway Skytrain line. And that is going, uh, right here. Uh, oh, there it is. And so on this corner, that's going to be the new SkyTrain station. They're just in the midst of building it right now. And that's going to be the terminal of it right there. So Kitsilano, definitely a walkable neighborhood, walks for 92. Let's move on to the next one. The second neighborhood directly adjacent to Kitsilano is Fairview. The Fairview Slopes, as we also call it. It's the most walkable neighborhood outside of the downtown core. It's really, you know, just... I mean, obviously right across the bridge from downtown, super conveniently located. Granville Island is right here. Uh, that's one of the tourist destinations in the city. Uh, you can check it out. I would definitely pay to visit. Uh, wonderful grocery shopping produce. It's a little expensive, uh, quite an experience, but you're not going to find fresher fish and produce anywhere in the city uh, than Granville Island. Unlike Kitsilano, Kitsilano was the only neighborhood that we're going to talk about that has direct beach access. Even though Fairview is on the water right here along Falls Creek, there are no beaches here. And Falls Creek, frankly, isn't a body of water that I would want to swim in. Uh, it's, you know, a dead end and in the middle of the city. But some beautiful, the seawall goes right along here, beautiful walks. Uh, Charleston Park, just a gorgeous spot and the views from Fairview as as it's called Fairview slope down the slopes overlooking the city of Vancouver and then above the city the mountains on top it's just absolutely gorgeous there and the types of housing generally we have north of Broadway here it is going to be mostly condos mostly condos built in the 70s and 80s and then some buildings that are built in the last 10 years or so there are more recent buildings let's just pop in here and take a look uh so yeah these are you can see the the angle here the slope of the land and actually yeah there's a little chocolate park there's a little uh new newer development here but you can see this is very typical of of uh the fairview slopes and broadway it's not the most attractive central business area it's uh it's a bit of a, a highway really but uh, there are a lot of shops and services along here. And then just up there, that building right back there is the Vancouver General Hospital. So there are a lot of doctors and nurses that live in this neighborhood because it's so convenient to, you know, Vancouver's major hospital. And there's a lot of doctors' offices and dental offices in these buildings that you'll find along here. So even if you're not living here, this is a part of the city that people frequent. And a little bit newer development is happening right along Canby. And that's because of the Canby Skytrain line, the, the Canada line that runs right up. The Canby Bridge heads to downtown, but you can see big box retail uh, for Vancouver came here. A little bit controversial, but there's Best Buy, Canadian Tire, a little bit, there's a Save on Foods right there. And there's a Winners and a Home Depot, right? There's the, the Home Depot's right in there. And across the street is a Whole Foods right up here. Again, this construction, is happening uh, because we're building a major new SkyTrain line running along Broadway. And this is uh, an expansion of the current SkyTrain station at, uh, at the Canby SkyTrain station. City Hall is just in behind here. So once you get past um, 12th, really, yeah, between 12th and 16th, there are a lot of townhouse developments in this neighborhood. So north of 12th, we actually have an assortment of different uh, housing, but mostly smaller condo developments. And there are some high end developments in that area as well. But condos, townhouses, that's what you're going to find in Fairview. And with a walk score of 93, you definitely don't need a car and it's so accessible. You're getting very central to the city, uh, very easy access to the beaches and to downtown as well. I'll get back to the video in a second, but 
If you're getting any value out of this video, you want to see more content about Vancouver, what it's like to live here. I put out content like this every week. I'd love it if you'd subscribe, smash that subscribe button, and let's get back to the video. And our third neighborhood is Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant kind of straddles the east side and the west side of the city. You can see Main Street running through the middle. That's roughly the center. It's actually Ontario, which runs two blocks to the west of it. But let's just pretend it's Main Street. It's easier. So there is a west side Mount Pleasant and there is an east side Mount Pleasant. And it runs up along the edge. We're, we're right beside Fairview. We're basically just moving west to east. We have Kitsilano, Fairview, now Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant has a walk score of 92. Um, along the water, we have Olympic Village. And so that's going to be a lot of the newer development. I mean, obviously it's about 12, 13 years old. It was built for the Olympics, the 2020, 2010 Winter Olympics and uh, sold as uh, condominium developments. It's a really beautiful place to live uh, right in there along the waterfront. Great quality buildings. You can see now we're looking uh, across False Creek. That's BC Place Stadium. That is Yale Town on the other side of the water. Um, you have the seawall running right along here. Really great buildings. It has its own community center. It has some great amenities. Couldn't recommend living in this area enough if you want a walkable neighborhood. This zone of Mount Pleasant is a little more light industrial, I would say. They're converting a lot of it to high tech industry. A lot of newer buildings being built there, but it's still relative, mostly commercial oriented. Where this zone is older stock built in the 70s, uh, condominium buildings mostly. These are generally cheaper. A lot of these are just going to be apartment buildings that aren't actually units for sale. A really nice little pocket neighborhood that's relatively affordable. And then as you, you know, you're, you're looking main right here is not the prettiest. Neither is second or great Northern way along here. Uh, but the slope up above really is pretty. And you see these parks smattered in through here. This one in particular, Dude Chilling Park, which sort of somebody renamed and uh, the city took on that name. And uh, it's kind of a, it's got a life of its own. It's a it's a real gathering place in the neighborhood on a, on a beautiful summer's day. And the real center, commercial center is, is Maine and Broadway. And again, that new SkyTrain line is gonna be running right along Broadway here. You do have SkyTrain up here at Terminal, um, Science World, uh, right up top here. Uh, great place for the kids. So right across, you got um, Kingsgate Mall over there. And uh, Main Street, this is the corner actually of Kingsway and, and uh, Broadway. Um, we're going to head back over to Main Street. And this actually the last photo you just saw it, but it, it just changed back to an older picture. This is all gone. This is where there's a uh, going to be a new SkyTrain station. And uh, Maine is where everything really happens. It's one of the coolest neighborhoods, this Mount Pleasant, uh, rated as one of the cool, coolest neighborhoods. It's one of Vancouver's favorite neighborhoods. It's relatively affordable. It's got a lot of cool little coffee shops, restaurants, vintage shops, all types of different stores. Uh, well, there's a cannabis retailer. Right in here is a uh, parkour gym, and you can also go and play bingo at the Legion. And uh, yeah, some of, the, some of the best restaurants in the city. The nightlife is pretty vibrant. One of my favorite bars is right across, right beside that paint store over there. And when you head further up, well, and in this area, there are newer buildings that are built in here too. It's not all older stock, but good, solid buildings, lots of choices. And as we can see, very central. This is the center of the city, really. Uh, very accessible to the rest of the lower mainland, as well as getting out to the north, whether you want to go to the North Shore or up to, towards Whistler. Into downtown is very easy as well. Next up is the West End. And the West End has a walk score of 95. As you can see, it's located right over here, the west half portion of uh, the downtown core. And it's really Vancouver's oldest high density neighborhood. Uh, originally kind of in the 40s, uh, it was redeveloped. It was a beach community of the city of Vancouver, uh, you know, 100 odd years ago. Lots of cute little homes were built as summer vacation spots for people. And uh, so you do have the beach right along here, English Bay Beach. There's more beaches up here, second beach, third beach, as you get out into uh, Stanley Park. Um, and you're kind of 
sandwiched between the water, the beaches, Stanley Park, and the downtown core. So you can't really beat the location. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Let's take a quick look at what the beach looks like. You can see it's it's got its own little microclimate, so you you can actually you have these palm trees that uh, that survive in Canada. Amazingly enough, there's the beach. Um, not uh, this is November, not the prettiest day at the beach, but even on those days, people are out here and uh, taking a walk along the seawall, and you can see the buildings in behind. So this is west of Denman up here. Personally, my favorite. Uh, part of the West End. This is Denman right along here. It, whenever I go there, I feel like I'm on vacation. There's beautiful buildings. Uh, you're so close to Stanley Park and you're just separated from the city, but so accessible to downtown. And I'm always amazed that the West End is actually a relatively affordable part of the city, despite how convenient it is and that great walk score. Um, and so you have beaches, you got like vibrant life along Denman, along Davie, along Robson. These are the commercial zones. I'm just going to take you in on uh, Davie here and this corner of Davie and Butte. And you can see by these, uh, the markings on the street, this is actually Vancouver's most friendly LGBTQ plus neighborhood, pretty vibrant part of, of the community, very accepting, welcoming vibe throughout this area. But you can see what it looks like. Lots of little places to get a bite to eat. There's a grocery store just behind us back here. Lots of restaurants, lots of coffee shops. And as you head down uh, further, we'll go ahead and Northwest this way. This will get you down to the beach. And same thing over here on Denman. So you can see, well, there's the Denman Place Mall or uh, the, the movie theater. There's a little questionable, but, <laughs> but a lot of vibrancy to this neighborhood. Lots of restaurants, lots of people out walking at all times of the year. Lots of people that don't own vehicles live in this neighborhood. And then let's just take a quick look at what sort of the typical street might look like and the types of buildings that are around. So you can see this building probably built in the early 90s. Um, there's there's high rises about. I think that's some new construction happening over there. So there are newer buildings being built as well. This is an older building in the background, a uh, high rise older. Um, and you do find there are plenty of apartment buildings. There's the odd uh, single family residential house. This is a historic building, I believe. Yeah, there's a few of them around, but not a significant part of the market. Uh, mostly condos, mostly apartment buildings. Uh, but there are also sort of before condos, there are co-ops in uh, the West End and a fair amount of them. If you're looking for an alternative, one of the advantages of co-ops now is uh, no condo can have a rental restriction, but a co-op can. So incidentally, if you're looking for somewhere where people aren't allowed to rent, you just want to live with other owners, a co-op might be a good option for you. All right. I think that's it for the West End. A real quick interruption. I don't make a living on YouTube. I make a living as a real estate agent in Vancouver. And over my 15 year career, I've helped hundreds of families move to the city of Vancouver from all over Canada and all over the world. I can help you as well. Reach out anytime. My contact information is right there on the screen. I'd love to help you. I got your back if you're moving to Vancouver. Now, let me get you right back to the video. So I've saved Vancouver's most walkable neighborhood for last. And uh, the most walkable neighborhood in the city is Yale Town. In Canada's most walkable city, Yale Town is its most walkable neighborhood with a walk score, an incredible walk score of 97. There's really everything at your doorstep. There's no reason to have a car here. Everything is within walking distance and it's right at the heart of it all. And that's the neighborhood we're gonna check out right now. This is sort of the traditional center of Yale Town, the yellowish area in there. It's roughly a three by three block square, uh, nine blocks in total. That's a, a historical protected zone. It used to be an industrial warehouse neighborhood. And in the 80s, many of those buildings were converted, uh, sort of getting ready for Expo, which uh, sort of this area along False Creek where, where the Expo lands. And this was just adjacent to it. So part of the cleanup of this part, uh, which was an industrial zone, was converting them to uh, from those warehouses to condos. So you're going to find these loft conversions, really cool loft conversions of buildings in Yale Town, uh, like a building like that. Yeah. And some of these have amazing rooftop patios, decks, a lot of nightlife 
more so than any of the other areas that we looked at. I mean, Main Street's pretty happening, Mount Pleasant, uh, but the core of, of nightlife really is is uh, Yale Town. If you want to be spending a lot of money at, at, you know, on a weekend, this is where you can do it. Lots of pubs, lots of great restaurants, breweries and stuff. But I would say, you know, Yale Town is really what most people consider Yale Town is larger than this kind of extending up here. So roughly from Granville down to the water uh, over here and to Smythe, uh, roughly uh, some, I guess you could maybe say Robson even, but but I think most people would say it, it ends around Smythe. And so you have those older buildings right in there and some newer ones, I mean, along the waterfront, this is, you know, you have some very exclusive high-end buildings built. Um, and most of them also have townhouses along the bottom. Um, so they're attached to the, to the larger building, but you can see these buildings, they all, there's incredible views, lots of parks down here. Uh, the seawall runs right along the bottom. So this is a little less, you know, obviously this is more residential, less nightlife than that sort of central zone that we saw. And same thing in this Marina side. So again, look at those buildings. They have incredible views overlooking the water, the marina. It's going to be Granville Island over there. And this is a really busy spot in the, on the nicer summer days. Great places for coffee and brunch and uh, shopping in this zone. Uh, grocery shopping is what I meant. Um, and Yale Town is so walkable because it's right next to downtown. There's so many shops and services in this area. There's a couple of SkyTrain stops in here. And you can take the SkyTrain right down Canby Street, um, right out to the airport. So there's plenty of people that, you know, business travelers or uh, flight attendants and pilots that will live in this zone because it's so easy for them to get right out of the city really quickly. It takes about 25 minutes to, to get from here out to the airport. Um, and it's also really convenient to get to other parts of the lower mainland, whether you're heading over to the North shore, heading up uh, the highway to, to Whistler or over here to Horseshoe Bay and getting over onto uh, the Gulf islands or to, to Vancouver Island. Um, yeah, there's a lot that's offered in Yale town. And so that walk score of 95 is well-deserved. And that's our top spot for Vancouver's most walkable neighborhoods. I hope you enjoyed that tour of Vancouver's most walkable neighborhoods. It was a lot of work, but also a lot of fun to put together. I think it came to, together pretty well. Um, I hope you think so too. If you do, hit that subscribe button. I put videos out like this every week. Give me a like. Um, I'd love to have a comment as well. In fact, I'm curious which of these neighborhoods is your favorite and why? Uh, what do you love about them? I'd love to hear from you. Um, and of course, if you're thinking of moving to Vancouver, I am a real estate agent. I can help you move here as well. Um, so. My contact information's right there below and uh, reach out anytime. I got your back if you're moving to Vancouver. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I put out videos like this every week. I'm going to see you on the next one next week.